Decentralized cryptocurrency networks need to make sure that nobody spends the same money twice without a central authority like Visa or PayPal in the middle. To accomplish this, networks use something called a consensus mechanism, which is a system that allows all the computers in a crypto network to agree about which transactions are legitimate. One of that consensus mechanisms is known as proof of stake. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Metaverse Economy channel. In this video, I will explain what proof of stake refers to how it works, and what it means to crypto investors. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch more videos like this. Proof of stake is a method of maintaining the integrity of a cryptocurrency, preventing users from printing extra coins they didn't earn. While a different method called proof of work is currently used by Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization, Ethereum has plans to migrate to proof of stake to make the platform more scalable and reduce energy consumption of the network. Both proof-of-work and proof-of-stake are what are called consensus mechanisms, the method by which a blockchain maintains its integrity. Consensus is what addresses the double-spending problem of digital money. If there were any way the user of a cryptocurrency could spend their coins more than once, it would undermine the entire system. The currency would be worthless. This is a tricky problem, especially with online currencies that have no central authority, such as a bank or government, to keep track of how much money each person has, how they're spending it, and whom they're paying. The Bitcoin network was the first to solve this problem with proof-of-work. Proof-of-stake has emerged as a possible alternative that some researchers think is both more energy-efficient and more secure, though there's debate about this. So you might be wondering why is proof-of-anything needed? It should be easy to prevent double-spending on a digital currency, right? Well, it's not so hard to prevent double-spending in a centralized manner when there's one entity managing a ledger of all the transactions. When Alice sends Bob $1, the manager of the central ledger simply takes $1 from Alice and gives $1 to Bob. PayPal does exactly that. But cryptocurrencies are different. The goal is not to have one leader or entity in control of the system, which makes this record keeping more complicated. Instead of just one leader, thousands of users run the Bitcoin software all over the world. These nodes ensure the rules of the network are followed. This sprawling infrastructure needs to be tied together so all the software is in agreement. Otherwise, these nodes will be disconnected islands. It turns out it isn't easy to get these users around the world to agree with each other, so decentralized money was out of reach for researchers for a long time. Until Bitcoin came along. Proof of work is the innovative algorithm that Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto came up with, making decentralized money without a leader come to life for the first time. Ethereum's developers understood from the beginning that proof of work would present limitations in scalability that would eventually need to be overcome. And indeed, as Ethereum-powered decentralized finance or DeFi protocols have surged in popularity, the blockchain has struggled to keep up, causing fees to spike. While the Bitcoin blockchain mostly just has to process incoming and outgoing Bitcoin transactions, much like a vast checkbook, Ethereum's blockchain also has to process a vast array of DeFi transactions, stable coin smart contracts, NFT minting and sales, and whatever innovations developers come up with in the future. Their solution has been to build an entirely new ETH2 blockchain, which began rolling out in December 2020 and should be finished in 2022. The upgraded version of Ethereum will employ a faster and less resource-intensive consensus mechanism called Proof-of-Stake. Cryptocurrencies including Cardano, Tezos, and Abmos all use Proof-of-Stake consensus mechanisms, with the goal being to maximize speed and efficiency while lowering fees. In a Proof-of-Stake system, staking serves a similar function to Proof-of-Works mining, in that it's the process by which a network participant gets selected to add the latest batch of transactions to the blockchain and earn some crypto in exchange. The exact details vary by project, but in general proof-of-stake blockchains employ a network of validators who contribute or stake their own crypto in exchange for a chance of getting to validate new transaction, update the blockchain, and earn a reward. The network selects a winner based on the amount of crypto each validator has in the pool and the length of time they've had it there, literally rewarding the most invested participants. Once the winner has validated the latest block of transactions, other validators can attest that the block is accurate. When a threshold number of attestations have been made, the network updates the blockchain. All participating validators receive a reward in the native cryptocurrency, which is generally distributed by the network in proportion to each validator's stake. Becoming a validator is a major responsibility and requires a fairly high level of technical knowledge. The minimum amount of crypto that validators are required to stake is often relatively high. For F2, for example, it's 32 Ether and validators can lose some of their stakes via a process called slashing if their node goes offline or if they validate a bad block of transactions. But even if that sounds like too much responsibility, 
You can still participate in staking by joining a staking pool run by someone else and earn rewards for crypto that would otherwise be sitting around. This process is often referred to as delegating and tools offered by exchanges by Coinbase can make it simple and seamless. Proof of work and proof of stake each pick a winner, the entity that will create the next block in a different way. With proof of work, miners are the participants. They are more likely to add additional blocks to the blockchain if they have more computational power, which is fueled by electricity. In proof of stake, miners are more likely to win additional blocks if they have more money, Ether, in the case of Ethereum. In other words, proof of stake relies on proof of how much stake users have. Energy consumption is one major difference between the two consensus mechanisms. Because proof of stake blockchains don't require miners to spend electricity on duplicative processes, that is, competing to solve the same puzzle, proof of stake allows networks to operate with substantially lower resource consumption. Both consensus mechanisms have economic consequences that penalize network disruptions and thwart malicious actors. In proof of work, the penalty for miners submitting invalid information or blocks is the sunk cost of computing power, energy, and time. In proof of stake, the validators stake crypto funds serve as an economic incentive to act in the network's best interests. In the case that a validator accepts a bad block, a portion of their stake funds will be slashed as a penalty. The amount that a validator can be slashed depends on the network. Proof of stake has drawn more than a few critics. One reason is that Ethereum developers have been quick to tout the advantages of proof of stake, but it has not yet been proven to work because it doesn't exist yet. Blockstream director of research Andrew Polstra wrote in mathematical paperback in 2015 saying proof of stake is fundamentally unable to produce a distributed consensus within Bitcoin's trust model. But if proof of stake does turn out to work, either without or with minimal complications, then it could be a greener alternative that can accomplish the same goals as proof of work, but more efficiently. The jury is still out on whether proof of stake is safe. Critics argue the system risks leading to an oligopoly. While blockchains are supposed to not have leaders in charge, critics worry that proof of stake would unintentionally steer blockchains back in the direction of centralized control, since users who have the most ether have the most power over the system. Since it is yet to be launched, we can all both hope that the new consensus mechanism turns out better and more effective. You could also share your thoughts on this. Do you think proof of stake will exceed the limitations of the proof of work mechanism? Leave your answers in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.